Welcome to Andy Bros. <laughs> this is episode 47. Getting up there. We are getting up there. Uh, you can go to our website at anybrospodcast.com because that's what all the cool kids are doing. You can follow us on the Twitter and subscribe to our RSS feed because that's how we know the people like us and are watching. Yes, you know, follow that up. You never know if we might do something crazy and you'll be like, you didn't tell me. And it's like, well, we did. You can also follow us <laughs> on your own time on YouTube because we have some videos on there. Yeah, you can watch the podcast on YouTube. What is it called? Following? Friending? Subscribing. Subscribing. Like, comment, subscribe, rate. Yeah, those things. I don't I don't spend Share. a lot of time on the, on the YouTube. Plus one. Retweet. Follow us on Google+. Plus. We're not on Google+, Plus, but you can I'm, look for I, us. I think we are. We're on everything. Okay. I even made us a Tumblr. That's news to me. Tumblr? Yeah, it's probably like Annie Dreams at Tumblr.com or Have something. Have you actually... <laughs> Go look at our Tumblr. Do we have? I, I thought you were kidding. <laughs> Do we no. have a Tumblr? Yeah, I never use it, obviously. But you know, I just make an Annie Bros everything for everybody. This. Okay, what's the address? Just so we can tell people. I don't know. Oh. Did you Google it, Annie Bros Tumblr? Annie yeah, Bros. I did. But it corrected. It corrected to something else. We have a Pinterest. Duh, I, don't... I don't remember that. <laughs> it's probably not ours. Annie Bros Pinterest. This is a bunch of pictures of dogs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is it our dogs? No, no, they're just random dogs. Boxers, Australian Shepherds, Blue Healers. And right. it's okay. Do not follow us on Pinterest. We're not on Pinterest. That's that is an imposter. They're trying to soil our good name. Uh, I'm not. It's not coming up. Tumblr. Do you spell Tumblr without the E? Yeah, of course I would do. You know, when I'm trying to look at my ponies and my Batman fan fiction, I know how to navigate Tumblr. Don't worry. Maybe they took it down. Oh, no, I found it. Okay. It's a picture of... What do we have posted on our Tumblr? We have a picture of some people rocking out. I don't know who this is. All right, so that's post number one. And then if you scroll down to post number two, it's the exact same thing. Oh, whoops. <laughs> I don't know how to Tumblr. Oh, then we got some pictures of uh, uh, DJ Annie Bro. He's he's wearing some naked woman on his shirt. Uh, those, But it's a guy. Yeah, the guy. Oh, wait, those are all men? Wait. <laughs> I can't tell because it's... It's anime. It's anime. <laughs> the last one is just uh, a sentence. <laughs> so stumble us at anybrospodcast.tumblr. Stumble, tumble, and we'll be happy. I mean, we have probably the greatest CSS development on the planet for this Tumblr website. We got our name here. <laughs> it's not even capitalized. <laughs> we have our picture in the corner there. It's maybe the size of a penny. <laughs> Leave us a review on iTunes. If you if you want to make our site better, you could give us uh, an email. All right, we'll let you. We need some content. Now. Basically, anything needs to be in here that's not this. <laughs> just anytime, just the anybody. If you use this site, if you use this Tumblr as a jumping off point for our website, though, that's all right. You can do that. I hope it has the link to our website. It, it's not linkable. It's just text. <laughs> it's not... <laughs> it just says anime podcast with no capitalization, and then. <laughs> And then the address. <laughs> Thanks, this is, Tumblr. This might be the most useless website in the entire world. <laughs> this is on par with those like stupid bot websites that are just a bunch of nonsense paragraphs about what you just searched. <laughs> well, that's I'm trying to get into what the kids are into these days. I mean, if I didn't know any better, I would think this was a fake website. <laughs> it like, wasn't. It was just made by a virus. <laughs> well, somebody else leave their own opinion. All right. On our you, great you've heard Tumblr. mine. That's my review of our website. But our real website is pretty great, if I do say so myself. Yeah, we got a nice banner drawn by... Adam Fife. Shout out. Shout out. He's a good guy. He he made a movie, a student film is what I'm calling it, but just because I want to sound better than it actually is. And I'm in it. It's pretty great. Is it done? Yeah, it's 20 seconds. Do you have a copy? I do. Should we watch it right now? We don't have to watch it right now. All There's right. no sound. It's a silent film. Oh, so there's literally nothing. It, it'd just be us looking at a screen. All right. Never mind then. When, I'll show you later. Are you going to upload it to YouTube? Uh, Maybe. We might We're in the works it. of making another movie soon, so hopefully we'll have something good. Yeah. I saw your freaking Metal Gear Solid movie the other day. 
<laughs> the one from like, yeah, I know. I was like a freshman in high school when he did that. <laughs> I don't know whose idea that was. But... That was for some guy's uh, class. He we had to make, uh, we had to make a parody of an action movie, so we made that. Okay. <laughs> I thought uh, the old P Rizzler was a good actor, but everybody else was kind of. I don't know. Yeah. They really seem concerned about where their guns were at all times. Johnny B's in that movie. He's uh before he became a pedophile. He drove the car. I don't know if we could call people a pedophile on this podcast. Have we ever done that? Well, it's I'm not wrong. He's he's certified. I can't remember if I've, I've been cutting that out of Annie Bros or not. Well, maybe we should have less pe- pedophile listeners. Don't get so offended. All right. <laughs> He'll never hear this. He'll never hear anything again. He was in, <laughs> <laughs> in prison. <laughs> Welcome to Annie Bros. We're the bros. <laughs> what have you been watching? All right. Okay. I got to think about the whole list. The thing that sticks in my head, I started watching Slam Dunk. Slam Dunk? Yeah. As you know and are aware, I'm a fan of the sports shows. I started watching <clears throat> Kokoro's Basketball. Is that what it's called? Oh, Kuroko. Kuroko's Basketball. Watched seven episodes of it. It was like, I need to go back to something real. That's kind of, is it for girls? I could see how it could be for girls, but I don't think it is. Okay, it's, it's just, actually it's just sports. sports manga. All right, they just all happen to be... They, they're just pretty boys, and they run around in modern manga style, so it looks kind of for girls. Okay. It's definitely not like gay, like gay swimming is gay. All right, yeah. But, um... I, I've never seen it, I but all, the only thing I know about it is, uh, oh, they just uh, found and arrested the guy who was causing all the trouble for that. All the trouble? Yeah, you hear about the terrorist guy who really hated the author of Kuroko's Basketball, so he, like, sent anthrax to the stores and threatened to bomb Kamaket if I did not hear about this. basketball came to it. That makes that makes it relevant, then, that I watched it. <laughs> yeah. And they just found out who it was. It's, I guess he's just pissed at the author because they used to be friends in school or something. Now he's so famous, working literally 25 hours a day. Yeah, so I was watching that. I got kind of sick of it. I probably will keep keep watching it, but I wanted to switch it back to like good sports manga. But I was still in a basketball mood from watching that, so I picked up Slam Dunk. When is Slam Dunk from? Well, the manga is older. I know that. And I think the anime is from like two thousand or from like ninety five. Oh, mm, the manga. The manga is nineteen ninety to nineteen ninety six, thirty one volumes. The anime was from oh ninety three to ninety six, and then there's been like eight films. No, that's an exaggeration. There have been one, two, three, four films. Well, like, how slam dunk? That's pretty good, right? Yeah, actually. Uh, well, so far I am, I think f- five or six episodes in, maybe eight or seven and so far they played like one game of basketball and the rest of it is just this idiot trying to like impress this girl by pretending that he knows all about basketball but he doesn't it's oh, actually really? it's actually just kind of like gto right now just uh, this weird guy in funny facial expressions and then walking around and not i mean they refer to basketball because that's obviously but so far there there's no big game or anything he basically just antagonizes the main guy who's the uh the basketball club leader Hmm. And then he's like this big oaf, and then it come, come to find out it's the girl that he likes is it's his brother, <laughs> and he's like crap. I I love basketball. I'll be the best basketball player because I want this girl. Does the girl like basketball? Yeah, she loves basketball. Okay. And then but this guy's like really huge and like has a bunch of aptitude for basketball. That's why yeah he can basically do whatever he wants. And then uh, they're like oh we need to get him playing because like at, he was just showing off and he was able to like do a slam dunk like in one go. So like. <laughs> They're like he's. They don't say he's the chosen one or anything corny like that. But they're like, oh, like that guy's tall and could do this. So get him, get him on here. All right. I don't know. It's pretty cool. Uh, I like it. I, I had no sports manga to watch or anime to watch. Hmm. Now I had this because I got disappointed from Kuroko blue-haired basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't slam dunk red hair? Yeah, but he's not a little bitch. <laughs> I don't know. Kuroko's kind of cool. It's just uh. It's a different type of show. What about that cycling anime? You were going to give that a shot? <laughs> Probably not. No. I want to. It sounds, in concept, like I'd love it. But I, I watched the first couple episodes of it a while ago, and I just couldn't couldn't handle it. It was not that good. Okay. I wanted it to be good so bad. Oh, wait. Which cycling one? The Overdrive or like the one that just came out? No, the Yoamushi Yoa Pedal. Yep. Oh, okay. Never mind. I haven't watched that. He's an otaku who rides his bike 
to the Akiba every single day, so he got good at biking. <sighs> That's all that I know of it. Which, by that description, I'm probably going to watch it. Unless it's, it's, it'll probably suck or something, but I'll give it a shot. Is it about cycling? Does he join the cycling club and, like, become a cycler? Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah, it's totally cycling anime. I'll watch that then. I'm just keeping the demographic alive here in America. I just might solely myself. <laughs> Sports. <laughs> Are those on a slam dunk on Crunchyroll? Uh, I didn't find it on there. I found it on some streaming site. Is Kuroku? Yeah, Kuroku, Kuroku was. All right, Both yeah. seasons. So, yeah, I started from episode one on there and just kept working up. Because that's, yeah, that's really recent. It's pretty good. Okay, and then, so I watched those two things. And then I watched Salary Man something or other. Kintaro. Kintaro. Salary Man Kintaro. Yeah. Or, yeah. That's pretty funny. It was, it was ridiculous. It's like the most ridiculous thing that I've seen in a long time. Like, they take being a, it's like a sports manga, but... It's, it's, being a businessman is the sport. It's that crazy. It's just like, you can't, like, being a businessman is just all about this. It's crazy. Awesome. <laughs> it's it's awesome. It's the best. <laughs> it's just so ridiculous. Like, they, there's, like, all these weird conspiracies. It's, like, seriously, like, a weird political drama, but it's ridiculous since it's just t- treating it so sports about the whole thing. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty great. I got, like, 11 episodes in. I think 11 or 12 yeah i i want to watch that pretty soon too it's so ridiculous this guy the main character is the best he just doesn't give a shit <laughs> that's his entire mo he just goes around doing whatever he wants like he's like this badass from there was like a you know motorcycle gang and all these people um just respect and love him it's like gto like that where they just like he can do whatever he wants because he was such a badass back in the day that he has the best reputation but the company doesn't like that he's like a thug but right. he just sort of walks in and wears a headband and just, <laughs> this is being a, like a delinquent all around. And then they'll ask, like, he, he doesn't care. Like, he's not nice like GTO where he's like trying to do a good job. He, he's trying to do a good job, but someone will just piss him off and he'll just like, no, and then just be all serious and just kill them. Like, this is North Star style. And you're like, <laughs> like, okay. You just punch that guy out in like the office. Like, he doesn't care at all. Wow. But then sometimes he'll, he doesn't ever, he's not like a jokester as much. He just is like a serious guy trying to be a salary man. But it's like a comedy kind of. It's, it's, it's great. Awesome. I'm going to watch that pretty soon then. There's like one part that I remember distinctly where he just yells like, I, I want to fight you. And then just like hits him in the face. <laughs> I was like, okay, I guess. I guess that's that. Nice. It's kind of the same. It reminds me of Slam Dunk in the same exact way where the main character is just this thug who doesn't. He's kind of goofy, but he just doesn't care. And he'll just be like, I'm going to punch you right now because I don't care. <laughs> I think those are the only things I've been watching, aside from the recent stuff, like Kill a Kill. I haven't watched. I didn't. I didn't watch the uh, Golden Time from last week. It's pretty good. I, you know, I'll have to look at, you know, everything I'm watching. But Golden Time is not bad. I, I, I know. I like it. It's a lot better than White Album Two. Like White Album Two hasn't ended or anything, but I mean, everyone was recommending White Album Two, saying how it's. Oh, it's so good, and you know, this and that, and nobody's watching it, but they really should be. It's so generic, you know? Yeah. And Golden Time is not generic. It's actually like, you know, it's still romance, and you're not going to get anything else besides just drama and romance, but it's like, it's actually fun to watch, because they get trapped in a cult, or they go to like a, yeah. a rave, or, you know, he's got amnesia. It's fun to watch. Yeah. But the newest Kill a Kill, I mean, you know, what was that, 12? Yeah. That was, I hope there's an episode next week, but I wonder if they'll take, like, uh, Christmas off or something or wait until the new year. Yeah, there might not be, there might be a break in the week. Because that was wild. That felt like, you know, the half, like, all right, yeah. it's the end of the first half. Yeah, they definitely wrapped up, like, that arc, and it's, like, the new thing now, the next thing. I'm liking it more and more with every episode, but I still have the problem where, like, I don't know if it's still a problem, but just the comic relief mixed in with the dramatic serious parts, you know? I get annoyed at the comic relief every time. Like, I used to get annoyed a lot, but now it's like, all right, that's what it is. It's not like, you know, it's not like Star Wars where it's like, because sometimes I'm like, is Mako not Jar Jar, you know? Like, everyone else is having this giant, like, lightsaber battle and everything, and Mako just, like, 
runs through where the big tough army guy couldn't get through. He's like, I couldn't lay a finger on any of those three girls. Yeah. And Mako just runs up and hugs her and says, like, come back. And then they do. But it's like, I don't know. I guess that's what the show is. But it's it kind of pulls me out of the show a little bit when they have the craziest, that newy girl. And she's just, you know, the typical insane, but is like in a pink ballerina dress, but is insanely evil. And yeah. Ryuko transforms into a giant monster that's constantly bleeding. And I'm like, oh, my God. And then Mako is like a Warner Brothers, Hanna-Barbera cartoon, just running in there and bouncing around. So... Yeah, I definitely get annoyed. I don't know, I haven't gotten to the point where I'm like, oh, I just am going to take this now. I still get annoyed every time she's talking. Yeah, I got to that point a while ago, but I, I kind of got over it, and I'm just like, eh, I guess this is what the show is, you know? Like, maybe... Oh, yeah, I definitely ignore her and just, was like, whatever. It doesn't make me as mad, but I still just, like, oh, I wish you weren't on the screen right now. Go back to the fight. <laughs> Kind of, but it's like even if they took her out, like they, I think they just they just have to do a whole new show and a different show. Like I wouldn't want Mako gone or anything in this show. I want her to change. I like when I said saying before in when they do the Fight Club and she's all crazy. I was wishing she would just stay like that and everyone would just be an elevated level of awesome just the whole time. Uh, but yeah. No, they go back and then like of course they go back. Yeah, I think that's what Kill a Kill is at this point now. Like, I love Mako. She's might be my favorite character. I don't know. I think it's just another another time they'll do a more... Like, if there's, like, serious parts and goofy parts, it'll be more serious than goofy. Oh, yeah. You know? Because, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, Kill a Kill's so goofy. And then it tries to be, like, your father was the greatest scientist and I murdered him and now I've come to murder you and you are a monster and this and that. And it's just like, hey... People die when they are killed, you know? Yeah. And then I'll swim through the the fight, you know? Swim through the fight. The pure black energy that comes from them clashing. Yeah. You just swim through it like it's a lake. But it's entertaining. Yeah, it's all right. I don't know. I don't know if it'll be remembered as like a classic and everyone, you know, I don't know if people are still serious when they say it's saving anime or it's the greatest thing ever, but... The story-wise, I don't think so, but... Like, I don't know, animation and technique-wise, just overall feel yeah, of the medium is like, oh, this is, like, totally not what you're getting usually nowadays. Yeah, it's just stylized. Like, even the animation is not good. Uh, some, are, some of it is. Some of it is okay, but a lot of it is just, like, it's, you can tell they're saving money and saving frames and just, you Yeah, know. for sure. It's not, like, just flowy, flowy the whole time, but it is has really nice style. Yeah. And it looks it still looks all pretty decent all the time. Yeah. I, I definitely it's all love colorful it. and nice and you're like, all right. Not like Samurai Full Minecraft or something where you're like, What is that? That is a white background and a guy with a straight Nobody line a, mouth and I don't off model faces and yeah. no detail. Yeah. So it never does that. It always looks like these models look great and everything is looks cool. Or if it is crappy, like they did it on purpose and they're like, all right, yeah. this is crappy. It switches right to like uh, they aren't Inferno trying to Cop fool or you like, you know, mm-hmm. oh, like let's just, they're too far away. So now you can't make out the detail. It's like, no, here's a still frame. If we need her to move, she's going to shake back and forth, you know? Yeah. But whatever. It's pretty good. It's... I wonder if Trigger, cause like it really seems like, you know, they're getting a lot of American sensibilities with it. And you know how successful the Kickstarter with Little Witch Academia was, I wonder if they won't, like, do some more crowdfunding to get more shows. I wonder if this is popular in Japan. Uh, well, I don't really know. Yeah. I assume you know, so, but I don't really chart how exactly popular. Yeah, like, I would not be surprised if it if I found out that this was not doing well in Japan, but mm. I would like, I hope that it that it is. Just because, I don't know, it seems like not the type of thing that is what's selling nowadays. And, well, and, and there's a reason why we're not seeing a ton of stuff like this anyway. Like, I wonder if it's like a bold move on Trigger's part, and then it just will do poorly and they won't get to make anything else. Yeah, I wonder how relatively well it's doing, yeah. Because, like, if you say, I mean, you can say it's popular here, but what does that mean? A lot of people watch it on Crunchyroll, you know? Yeah, 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 but it's something along the lines of, like, something like Cowboy Bebop was popular here and not in Japan or stuff like that, where if it's got, I don't know, maybe too much weird action or over-the-top crap that no one's 
in Japan cares. And oh they, and... no, I don't think it's at that level. It's so it's very Japanese. They go no, to I know the that. school they go and to, everything. Well, that's just because that's what has to happen. In there's shows, but... there's characters that can be considered moe. I suppose, yeah. You know, it's not. I don't think it's on a level of like bottom tier, but I think it's, it's. I mean, it's probably doing better than Beyond the Boundary. I'll say that. Like Japanese people don't have completely different tastes. A lot of things, if it's like if it's not moe, it won't sell. You know, there's kind of that rule, but yeah, you know, I think Kill a Kill is probably doing decent. I, I hope so. I'll have to look at some charts, and then again, it's like relatively how i mean it's no evangelion or something there's probably not or maybe there's billboards for it i don't know yeah i'm sure i, I remember you were saying before that uh the next thing they make is probably going to be like the thing that's what i feel i feel like they're still training with kill a kill like they're really just throwing everything in there and it's real goofy and not serious yeah they probably have the the capacity and the potential to make a masterpiece very soon yeah because even like i well, I don't know how many times we've said this by now, or how many times you've said it, but I was thinking about Gurren Lagann, and I was thinking about, like, man, Gurren Lagann didn't have this many goofy parts, you know? No. Like, didn't. by halfway, we were in full-on serious time. I was hoping that Kill a Kill would be more like that, too. Because, like, even the serious things are ridiculous, not, like, the most serious thing I've ever seen. It's still kind of, like, this is bizarre and wacky. But in the world, it's... It's in, serious. In their world, yeah, they, they take it very seriously. It's like they don't watching, say, like, oh, freaking giant drill, like, what? Yeah, it's like watching, like, Kill, Kill Bill or something, where you're like, it's serious, it's happening, but it's just ridiculous and kind of fun at the same time. Whereas, in Kill a Kill, it's like that, and then there'd be some weird comic relief that I don't really think should belong, or... It's like it, it it's it's serious parts are still kind of goofy and funny even if it's not needing to have weird humor like that. Yeah. Seems like they're going to get into another monster of the week maybe for a while, so I don't know about that. Saving some money. Saving and Nudist Beach still has done nothing, nothing. at all. I'm sure so. they'll come in. <laughs> they have to. If they don't, then it's this poor show. Yeah. Poor illusion. But <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So we came here today to talk about the gate. And wow, I'm not, I'm that's not, right. I'm not talking about no damn gold gate, no gated community. I'm talking no. about Stein's gate. It's the choice of Stein's gate. It's called Stein. It's Stein's gate, the movie. Stein's gate, the movie. The, the movie f- of Stein's gate. It's a feature length film. It was a visual novel and it was a hit anime series. And then they made a movie sequel. Yeah, it is. Let's see if we can get the translated version or the version I'm going to butcher. Just do both. Okay, the butchered version is Steins Gate Fuka Ryoki no Deja Vu. And it doesn't have a translation. Come on, what's it mean? Is that like Deja Vu Dimension? Um, Realm? Steins Gate the movie Burden Domain of Deja Vu. Domain. Burden Domain of Deja Vu. It is a 2013 Japanese animated film produced by White Fox. But you're already, White Fox. You already know that. Yeah, it looked pretty all right. So yeah, we watched that, and I just want to say, I'm not sure what happened. You're not. I'm mostly sure, but I didn't walk away from that movie with the same kind of good feeling that I did from the series. I can see that. That's actually what, I mean, I've been trying to avoid spoilers and such. Are we not going to spoil this? No, I, my personally, I was trying to avoid spoilers before I watched the movie, because it's been a couple days or a week since it came out. Uh-huh. But I was waiting to watch it at your house on your nice 1080p TV. The P the PV. Yeah. PTV, Patrick's TV. The progressive vision. Uh-huh. uh-huh. And, yeah, I heard somebody say, oh, not as good as the series. And, yeah, to me it really felt like an omake or like a weird, like, special episode. And when it first started, I was enjoying it, you know, it's because I guess it's canon, right? Yeah. It's in the regular... Storyline and right after, line. The, right after the end of the story, right? Yeah, it's not a spin off of anything. At the end of the series, they are in the true ending where everybody is saved and everything. Don't they call it the Steins Gate? Yeah, that world line is called Steins Gate. Spoiler alert. Oh, yeah, do not watch the Steins Gate movie if you haven't seen the series or played the novel. It will not make any sense. And I guess you gotta watch the OVA too because. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Because right at the end of the series, it just ends with him seeing Christina on the street and just saying, Hey, you. And she's like, Don't call me Christina. Wait. Remember? And yeah. it just ends. Yeah. 
But then they go to America, and I start trying to remember, and she starts saying, like, I've been having these dreams about, like, all these things that happen in past worlds. Do you remember, is that what happens in the OVA? I don't remember the OVA being overly serious and having a lot of story. I but, thought it was mostly, like, just a bunch of whatever. Uh -huh. But they definitely go to America and hang out with Kurisu. Yeah, they do. They do go to America. I remember that, because there's the, uh, there's the customs part that I thought was funny and all that. So, And I thought they talked, like... A little bit about well, I've been having these dreams and like how what was it like? And like I haven't seen the OBA in like three years, so I don't remember what happened in it. Yeah, I can't really remember too because I watched the series and I played the vision novel. It's the same thing, and then like I watched the OBA one time, but I guess it's kind of it. I mean, yeah, it will not hurt to watch it. It'll probably help to watch it. So watch that episode, the last episode, the last episode. of the series. And yeah, the movie starts off, you know, Christina comes back from America for a dumb reason, any reason. She has a stupid conference or something. But it's a year after the series. Mm -hmm. Or a year after the, end of the, the OVA of the end of the series, or something. Yeah. I don't know. It's 2011. And they're all just goofing around having a fun time. I thought that was great. Like, I can almost use, uh, I love it when they just have a big chunk of just the lab members living their life. Yeah, I like. I used to hate filler type stuff, but then I've kind of reversed that to in shows. Or sometimes I'm like, those are good characters. I would watch filler of Okabe, Mayuri, and yeah, Daru. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, if you if you like the show enough, I think filler's fine. Like I don't know some sports shows. I'm like, now that the sport happened and it took forever for me to get through that tournament, I'm kind of ready to see them just do some whatever. <laughs> like, like I'm kind of happy when it's filler time. I don't have to be really paying attention to a giant tournament again. Yeah, but I thought it was fun just how those all the characters in that show interact. Yeah, yeah, so, like, them having filler time is great and fine. Yeah. But then Christina came back, and then everyone else came back, too. Like, Ferris just kept walking in every day, just being like, hey, guys, how's it going? They're and all then Moika would come up from the shop and just hang out, too. And They're besties. Yeah. All of them. I mean, Okabe is, like, I first I thought he was in a coma or something, just surrounded by girls and his one friend who's fat and none of the girls like so it's like ah you know <laughs> yeah but uh i can see why people like some people kind of get mad at the show and say it's dumb and you know or you know when shows get too popular there'll always be that crowd of people who say it's dumb yeah you know? jump the shark bro it's done yeah yeah but i really like steins gate so i was really enjoying the movie at first and then i don't know it's just that kind of movie where like it already had an ending so what are they gonna do you know this is the true ending. So they had to kind of they invent... They opened it back up to end it again. Yeah, they had to invent a new problem and then also a solution to it. So it turns out Okabe is having, like, flashbacks of the other world lines. Mm -hmm. And this kind of caused him to go crazy. Like, he'll have, like, a flashback that the rounders are attacking. So he, like, grabs a knife and, like, holds it at Mr. Braun's neck. And he keeps having all this weird flashbacks he's literally having like vietnam flashbacks like where he's there and he needs to thinks he needs to save something because something's going wrong and then he goes back to reality and he's like oh that happened in a different world i don't know why i just thought that that was happening right now yeah and i guess it's explained because his reading steiner is too powerful so he's too powerful I don't know if they ever said that or not, but it's like, I guess... Yeah, I guess, yeah, they said it was overloaded, like his was too... Yeah, but would that happen to anybody? I think it was, it was... Yeah, because they were saying the extreme stress of all the crap, because he kept going back in time, so he is just doesn't know what's right and what's And it couldn't now. be solved by just, like, get over it. No, no. He, okay. he keeps... Well, because he switched timelines, so like he doesn't remember... It'd be like having just, con like, continuous dreams, and you're just like, I don't remember if that's a dream or not, like... Yeah, of course. I mean, it's like having a lot of bad memories, but people have bad memories, and then they, you know, it's been a year. He's probably got, like, post-traumatic stress, but then, like, amplified by a billion because he was time traveling the whole time. Yeah. So he's having a bad time, and then Magise starts going on about how, did you know deja vu is when your memories are messed up in time, and I think it's related to you remembering other timelines. Oh, and I, Yeah. Another thing just from that previous thing. I don't think anyone can tell him, like, calm down, you're in the, you're in the correct time. Because no one else knows. Because he did all that, but none of the other people know that he time-traveled. So they can't just be like, don't worry, you're in the right time. They're just kind of like, whatever, he's being crazy. Yeah. That's probably the biggest thing. No one can help him out. I guess, I don't know. He has to just hope that he's in the right timeline, because that's all he can do. 
Yeah. If he's that messed up and confused. I don't know, I think. But it's basically kind of not much happens. This is a pretty good movie. And then Suzuha, like, kind of whispers to Kurisu. She's like, remember the cell phone in the microwave. And then she, uh, Kurisu's hanging out with Okabe one day, and he just disappears. Literally. And that's not a metaphor. It's the disappearance of Okabe Rintaro. He goes away. Like, his lab coat is where he was, and he is vanished. And she runs back, and she can't remember him either. And they, it turns out he just, like, rattled off from that timeline, that world line. I don't know. Where did he go? He went to a different one or Denise, something? Okay, this is what I can gather. I don't know if this is right or might. If I interpreted what they said correctly, but they had to, I mean, they broke open another box of time travel rules and, you know, they said the R timeline and I'm like, no, they're trying to get to the R timeline. No, the R timeline is where he went. I thought like one that's cause they, she, he, she said he disappeared and went to a place that is 0.0001%. No, they're trying to get to the 0.0001%. Well then where did, I thought he, they said that that's where he went. I'm not sure where he went, but I think he's just rattling off in between world lines because his memory is messed up. Oh, yeah, because it has to do with perception of what, what you perceive. Because they're in the Steins Gate world line, which is, like, supposedly the best world line, the, the good end one that's so cool. But apparently it's not. Amine traveled back from the future to say, by the way, this one's not that good because Okabe disappears and vanishes and does not exist. So you need to get over to the other one. I'm like, okay, so you need to move over to one that's 0.01% away, and it's called the R world line. And she's like, okay, so then she remembers how to build the thing, she builds it, and then she starts tripping out a little bit, and she's like, oh no, I'll never use time travel, I'll never do it. And then Suzuha, the old part-time warrior, yeah, she's like, well, you already built a time machine. Like, that's why I'm standing here. And all you do in the future is complain. So I thought I'd come back and just, you know, help you out. And I guess they just make out a couple times. Not the part-time warrior. No, not her. <laughs> uh, Christina and Hoin Kyoma. So they decide, like, they have to go back and do... Okay, I this is where I started thinking it's like... I thought it was so cool at first, but then it just... I don't know, it kind of got dumb. They have to go back in the past and do something in his life so it's, like, so impactful so that he realizes this is the real timeline. Right? Yeah. But if they go back that far, that's the same as every timeline. The timeline's only started to split in 2010, right? Yeah, when he finally when he invents the thing in the first place. So her, she goes back in time as her, and she just meets him at a bus stop, and it's the same year Myri's grandma died, right? Mm-hmm. And he's sad. He's like, oh, my friend is sad. So she's like, hey, here's a mad scientist named ho in Kyoma. He's a crazy guy. And then she kisses him. So then she goes to, like, some, like, in-between world and says, hey, you're coming back. Right? I couldn't tell if they went into an in-between world or if that was just him realizing it populated the world again. Or I wasn't sure what was going on there. Like, it really raises a lot more questions. It's kind of, it feels like just, I don't know, to me the whole thing was like a postscript to the real show. It just was like, oh yeah, and by the way, we tacked on this other thing. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't need to be there, like, they didn't need to make this. It could have just been an OVA of them just having fun times, and that would have been alright. Yeah, I really wish it wasn't like, or I wonder if it is considered canon or not, because it really kind of screws things up and raises a lot more questions. It's a nice, I mean, if you want more Steinsgate, watch it. If you like... Makise Kurisu, watch it. You know, it's all about her being the main character this time. Yeah, but that whole traveling back in time, like, number one, what she does in 2005 affects every timeline, right? Yeah. So he would always remember that, right? So even through the whole main series, like, in every single world line, that happened, right? Mm -hmm. That's not it. She didn't do the right thing. She's supposed to do something in the world line to make him realize which one is the real one. I don't get it. I think... Uh, I don't either. That's what I'm saying. I didn't get it. I, I thought I got it while I was watching, and then I'm like, I don't know, a bunch of stuff doesn't make sense. And I feel, I feel like it wasn't as thought out and planned and cool as the series was. Where During the series, I had time to like think about it, and they explained things well, and I was like, yeah, yeah, this is awesome. This one's like, time is weird, you gotta go here, and then stuff, and 
go make sure you don't die. <laughs> it's like, what? And all within like an hour and a half or whatever it was, two hours, 90 minutes. It's like, okay. I don't know. It just, it didn't feel like a real, like, like yeah, like like a fake special episode. Yeah, it really did feel like a bonus episode or something. I don't know. Like, we just watched it. Maybe we'll go look up some theory on the internet that'll explain everything, but... It would be, it'd make more sense, and I think uh, it would be worse. Hmm, how do I say this? It, it would it would have been better if they would have just left it at, he has to disappear, and that's the end. <laughs> I've been like, oh, that sucks. Like, okay. Because mm. I think, to me, where I started losing it is when they had to, like, they said how, how, like, no hope there was and how all this couldn't happen, and then they made up this crazy way that it could also happen. Because I'm like, if he just had to get, like, because all that up until where he just disappears makes sense. You're like, yeah, he's got the time sickness. He can't stay there. Like, sure, that's a sacrifice that he's going to make in order to not, you know, go Have on. the girls die. Yeah, yeah. And then it ends. And, it, it, you know, if it ended there, I'd be like, okay, that get I get it. And mm. while I don't like the ending, that, yeah, I wouldn't have liked that. that all makes sense. But I didn't think that it was kind of cheap where they're just like, it's the most dire situation yeah, you can go back. Give him a kiss at the bus stop, and he'll be cured. Yeah, the kiss at the bus stop's what I don't like. Like, I always believe, like, Suzuha can come in, and she's from the future and has a time machine. She can, you know, the deus ex machina. And she's like, hey, guess what? Like, we got time travel. We can solve any problem in the world, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, fine. Go back and solve the problem. You got mm -hmm. unlimited tries, probably, and, you know, this and that. It's time travel. Unless Kurusu messes up and gets hit by a truck or something too many times. <laughs> that did happen once. So, you know, but then the whole, like, the problem I have is, like, what does somebody from the future who you don't know yet introducing the concept of a mad scientist that you're going to live the rest of your life acting like and then kissing you and then you just, like, okay, then you grow up later and you pretend like you don't know her. I don't know. That doesn't make any sense to me. Like, what did her kissing him in 2005? Well, I think the whole thing was that it was an impactful event on his life. He's just like, what the heck happened just now? And then he goes, and he's like, okay. How does that make him, like, hold on to the Steinsgate timeline stronger, though? Just because it started there, and not just random, like, however he figured out about the scientists in the first place. What? You know, how, however he just came to become a mad scientist normally. I don't know how that happened. He just did. But now, he's got some weird girl who he met, and... Some, especially some girl that he meets later, he's gonna know this is the, what should be happening right now. Just like a little reminder. I don't know that. What my problem with it wasn't what like that the logic didn't make sense. It was that it was stupid. <laughs> like it was not a way I would like a problem to be solved in on, in a time travel story. Unless it was stated, that's what needed to be done. Because the whole time they're walking around going like. What am I even supposed to do? How are we supposed to do this? This is a tough problem. I don't know. You're supposed to know what to do. Like this and that. And she's all walking around. And then it gets to like the climactic point. And she's like, are you lost? Me too. Here's a story about a mad scientist. She probably Smooch. Had, I think she's had like, nothing oh, else to do. That did it. I, I, I kind of think that she might have not. She didn't think that that was the solution. She was just like. I didn't even think that was a solution. No, she probably didn't either. Like I had, I don't know what I'm gonna it's do. It's not. It's like it. It would have been she cool tried. if it was. There was something like, oh, that's it. Yeah, that makes sense. But the whole time it's just like, okay, that still doesn't make sense. You know, I was waiting so hard for like the mystery to be on. Like when she's walking through the past, I was like, what is gonna be the trick? Like it's gonna be a callback to something, and you know, it'll all make sense. But it didn't for me. I don't know. Yeah. Very, a lot of romance, so if you like that... If you like there. those two characters, you're going to love this. And if you're, like, invested in the relationship, you're, you'll love this more. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good, uh, I wish better for a Steinsgate movie, but it's not bad. You get funny scenes. Yeah, a few. Yeah. Not as much wackiness. I mean, I, I kind of didn't like... I knew that this would happen, but I didn't like that they just were like, haha, get it? Like, I like Dr. Pepper, and I'm a mad scientist. You're like... They just needed to be there because it's Science Gate, but I feel like they're the jokes that we already know could say more things. Yeah. Well, I like they they got a new 
science invention. Yeah, that the was cool the best visitor. Part. I was hoping more stuff like that would happen. A new thing, a new something that he would do, but another scenario, not just like, remember, I'm crazy. I like Dr. Pepper. You're like, I remember you like Dr. Pepper. You don't have to keep saying that. Yeah. <laughs> well, Makise became Halloween Kyoma for a little bit. That was a little bit fun. That was cool. I like that. I thought, oh, I thought how she was going to solve the problem was that she was just going to become like him. And then travel back to the past and like, you know, be him in the past. And then he would see it and be like, who's that crazy guy? I'm going to take that idea. Yeah. Oh, I didn't think that. That'd be even better. That's I, what I thought. Was I thought that happen. she was just going to, because she was trying to make it so they wouldn't remember him. I thought. So I thought she was just going to act like him and be like, remember it was me all along. And they'd be like, oh, it must have been. Oh. <laughs> I, I thought, I really thought they were going to go with, he's not coming back. Like he sacrificed himself. Oh, <laughs> that would have been crap. Because even while he was saying that, I'm like, that's not in character. Like, you work so hard to, like, have everybody be happy together. And then it's like, well, guess everybody's happy together. Guess I can just die and not reap any of that reward. Well, he had nothing. But he, he couldn't help it. He's like, I'm going to disappear. And it goes against him using the time machine again. So he's like, ah. Yeah, but he he should freaking just use the time machine again. Find another solution. I don't know. Like, I, I can see for him. I don't know. He just, he just, he's crazy from the time. He's yeah. like, I don't want anyone to have to do this because I know how it is all by myself and it sucks. Yeah, I know. So he was at the point where he's done. So, so that makes sense. That's, I was feeling, I'm like, this is the most tragic thing, but I think it'd have more credibility if he just kept it with that instead of just like, but we can solve it with a really weird way. Yeah. Especially since Suzuha was standing right there like, Hey guys. I'm here to help solve it. I have the time machine, and I know where you have, like, I know which timeline you have to go to. I know what you got to do to get there. Let's do it. And they're just being crybabies, like, no, time travel is evil. We can never do it. No. She's like, well, I'm leaving then. Like, yeah. see ya. Then I think she slapped her or something. <laughs> I don't know. Just if you like Steins Gate, watch it. But it's just a shame that it couldn't be a masterpiece. Yeah, I was hoping it'd be like a two-hour like Madoka, like a new giant problem and a giant thing, or like if it wasn't going to be that, at least be a short ninety-minute. We're going to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something at least holds together because I just have so many questions about like why did that work? Now what do we have to do now that we have to add all this stuff into the? Oh, well, there'll be a second movie. You know, no, probably won't be. But... No, I don't know. <sighs> Steins Gate. Yeah, it's a burden of deja vu. It's crazy. It was crazy. It's not that crazy, but it's good. I like Steins Gate. It felt good to watch it again. It didn't lose any of that style or anything. No, it was perf It was just like watching a long episode of the show. That was a weird episode. <laughs> Can't wait for Chaos Child. Is that, is, that, that. is that the new thing they're going to make? Yeah. Chaos Child? Is that to do with Chaos Head? I think so. I think it's a sequel in that universe. Oh, I need to watch Chaos Head then. Yeah. It's a pretty good show. They need to make Robotics Notes second thing. They need to bring the game over. I think it's only for Xbox 360. I really liked Robotics Notes. You didn't? I did. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't bad. I, forgot, I kind of forgot about it until right now. It was a good show. Short Chaos Head, then. I should. It's my. It's on my list. You know, as soon as I watch all 100 episodes of Slam Dunk. Oh, yeah. I'll watch. We'll get on board with Chaos Head. It's time to jam. It's time to space jam. It's time to slam, I mean. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we... As the bros, we're granted permission to the pearly gates of Nukon. Just as the name implies, it's new. Brand new. Second annual convention in Portland for... It's not really an anime convention. Go to the site again. Let's read all the all things. All right, all right, all right. It's, you got to be quick at the end there. All right, let's go back and forth. All right, all right, all right. That's it's a convention. All right, it's a convention. It's got sci-fi. Anime. Video games. Comics. Cosplay. Board games. Role playing. Manga. Car games. Lolita. Pixel art. Technology. Space. Steampunk. Cyberpunk. Horror. Pony. A phrase. Pony. Pony. <laughs> okay, at the end there it goes too quick and it had some, probably said porn in there or something, I couldn't read it. I don't know, zombies? <laughs> zombies. That's new con. They, they're apparently just a nerd convention. Do the address of the hotel. Any kind of nerddom is going to be here. It's going to be at the Crown Plaza Hotel in downtown Portland. When is it going to be there? When? That is a fabulous question. One, that their website doesn't readily tell you. It's going to be the, the 27th through the 29th, the weekend right after Christmas. 
Wowee. Wowee, indeed. We're going to probably see all the stuff that they uh, said. We're going to see you. Yeah, if you can see, if you, if you find us there, hey, if you, hey, oh, if you see us at NewCon, you come up to us and you say, hey, bros, I'm a bit your biggest fan. All of you can say you're our biggest fan, and we won't, we won't make you fight it for, for the title. But you say that, you say, bro dollars, that's the promotional code. We'll know that you listened, and that's the secret password. You tell us that, we'll give you a special surprise. I'll give you $100 if that happens. Yeah, I, I almost might too. Because <laughs> it's almost guaranteed not to happen. Yeah. Um, if you do that, you'll get a special secret surprise. And $100. And $100. Now, no one's saying that that special secret surprise is us mugging the $100 from you that we just gave I'm you. I'm not. I promise you'll walk away with $100 and whatever prize Laven thinks up. Yeah, but what if my price is taking the hundred dollars? <laughs> it can't be. That it can't be. Well, I'll it'll be something. Chop else. you in the neck. It'll be something. I'll make you buy me a hundred dollars worth of ramen or something. No. Anyway, what do you got to lose? Nothing. All you have to do is go to, to go to Newcon, find us, or don't go and just wait for our report. Yeah, we're gonna tell you that you probably should have stayed home anyway. So. No, we can't say that. We can't say that yet. We're we're unbiased. I mean, it says that there are going to be furries and ponies there, so, I mean, it's going to be a great time. Yeah. It said that part pretty fast, though, so hopefully that's indicative of the time slot they get. They're like, well, uh, mandatory laws. Like, they're sick. making a pie chart, and, like, the biggest slice is the words that stayed on the longest. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> At the very end, it's like, well, 0.2% of furries wanted to have a panel, so we gave them five minutes in between panels. <laughs> <laughs> They can show up and do their thing. They can come and be like, Meet us in room 103. Okay, get out of here. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> That's the Andy Bros bit. <laughs> oh, Grandpa. Okay, so you're looking at the whores again. Oh, the whores. The whores.